Welcome to Flipside's Crash Course through Baking, Lighting, and Unity. Uh, during this quick tutorial, I'm going to walk you through the process of uh, setting up your lighting in your scene, uh, general practices for light map baking, and just kind of some insight into what exactly light map baking is and why we want to do that for some of our environments. So to start things off, I'm actually going to navigate up to my window, and under Rendering, I have this special tab here called Lighting Settings and I'm going to dock this here. And lighting settings are very important because this essentially lets me control all the base lighting in my scene as well as the type of lighting that I want to bake into my environment. And what do I mean when I say uh, baking my lighting is essentially I want to take complex lighting information because my scene has you know multiple lights that I've set up which is kind of its own topic in and of itself. But um, Basically, I want to take all of these lights, which are currently running in what we call real time, aka everything's being calculated per frame, and we want to take all that information and we want to bake those down into image maps that are then projected back into my scene. And what that does is it takes a lot of the processing overhead that uh, would have to be calculated and instead just creates like a reference map that gets rendered. And that frees up a lot of memory for processing. It's very performant. And um, the only like real drawback to baked lighting is that it's no longer dynamic. So if I were to say uh, rotate my light here, like so, just change my angle a little bit, um, I would have to rebake all of my lighting for my scene to get all that information in there. So that's the trade-off, but the actual lighting quality that I get once I bake my lighting will look really, really good. So um, <clears throat> essentially that's like the core thinking or the core thought process behind baked light maps. So uh, if I have a scene that I want to bake my lighting to, how do I get started with that? Well, the first thing you really have to look at is actually on the object side of things. And what you need to do is look at sort of um, the larger group of assets that make up your scene and figure out what parts of your scene aren't going to really change for the most part. So things like walls, floors, ceilings, uh, objects that can't be moved, um, any asset like that that uh, you'll want to bake your lighting to, you'll actually want to flag this static tab over here. So I'll just grab these objects here, flag them as no longer static, and essentially what happens when I hit this, it changes my mesh render a little bit. It'll uh, toggle this Contribute Global Illumination tab, um, and if I bake my lighting, it'll set, set the uh, Receive Global Illumination settings as well as scale my light map, stitch light seams, all very powerful settings. But uh, essentially what happens when I flip that toggle is Unity adds each of these assets to a large atlas of light map UVs, which is like, if you're familiar with the concept of UVs, that's basically the 2D projection version for, of an object that we use to lay textures onto. Um, and it, it takes all of these objects, light map UVs, and creates a huge image map that we can then render an image to. And we render that image using our lighting settings. So to start things off, we have all these tabs here. Normally, a real-time global illumination will be turned on. That's one thing we turn off immediately because we only want to be using baked lighting. And from there, we can choose a variety of settings. If we have a skybox material, we can apply that, which is a great way to get a lot of quick, uh, uh, quick and easy to set up environment lighting, uh, sun source. But uh, one cool way we can control the general color and shadow intensity of our scene is to actually use the gradient preset, which is really powerful because I can actually tweak these settings to get a general brightness for my scene using these three different values. Set like a little bit of color there. We can also set up our environment reflections. I usually drop these pretty low. We generally want to keep those compressed. And uh, I don't know, I can raise the, raise the resolution on that. But um, yeah, that's the environment settings. There's also the really important mixed lighting tab. Um, basically, we want to have baked global illumination turned off. If this is disabled, then I lose all my baking presets. And we also have our lighting mode tab here which we have three different options, shadow mask, subtractive, and baked indirect. And basically these, threes are, these three are different tiers for bake, uh, baked global illumination as far as uh, their fidelity and how much memory they take up. Shadow mask is the highest with baked indirect being a close second and subtractive is the least impactful but also the most unrealistic 
uh, as far as how it does its lighting calculations. Uh, but basically, Shadow Mask is where we start. If we have serious problems with the lighting, we'll drop it to Baked Indirect. And for outdoor scenes, we recommend using Subtractive because um, it's uh, basically Subtractive uses a fake shadow for all real-time objects, which is more performant than uh, sampling other assets. But of course, it's not as realistic. Um, so you're not going to have like any variation in shadows. You're only going to have like the one color. So for outdoor scenes, not as noticeable, but for smaller scenes with lots of color variation or indoor scenes, Baked Indirect or Shadow Mask, particularly Shadow Mask, we recommend. But uh, as far as the light mapping settings go, the settings that you'll use for your light mapper will vary depending on like the presets and a number of other factors, how big your scene is, how large you want your shadow maps, how complex it is. Uh, and there's a ton of documentation that we recommend reading up on. Unity has their own uh, internal learning platform, and particularly their lighting lessons would be, if you're very interested in baking, uh, learning more about baking your lighting, we highly recommend looking at Unity's own uh, learning portal. But uh, if you're just looking to quickly step in and get some decent light maps quickly, uh, we have some settings we can walk you through that will, for most cases, help you get a decent looking lighting setup and also see how the lighting in your scene looks very quickly. And we use these settings internally a lot of the time when we're iterating on new sets, so they're, they're tried and tested. Uh, so essentially, uh, the light mapping settings we like to use are progressive GPU because we have a GPU on our computer. Uh, if you don't have a GPU, you can use progressive CPU. Uh, I don't really prioritize our view. That basically determines like where Unity starts doing its lighting pass from. If you have that turned on, it'll start where your camera is. So that's really good for um, spot lighting checks. But for the most part, I leave that turned off. We do want multiple important sampling turned on. Um, direct samples 12, indirect samples 128, and environment samples. Uh, samples are basically like... It's a concept in rendering, but when you your samples are sort of the number of rays being cast by each light uh, when you do your lighting calculations, and depending on where those rays hit, um, pixel information is rendered. So essentially, more rays is going to look better to a certain degree, but it's also going to cost significantly more. So it's it's kind of like a there's a happy in between between using enough rays to get the information you want. And you, without going too high and significantly increasing the amount of time it takes to bake your lighting. But we have ours down actually pretty low because we're taking advantage of a really powerful tool in Unity 2019, which is denoising. And denoising is found under your filtering tab. Normally this is set to auto so you don't access it, but we recommend setting up the uh, filtering to advanced so we can actually control uh, all of our filter settings. And specifically, we want to be using the optics denoiser because what that's going to do is take a very noisy render that these that this number of samples is going to make and turn it into a really tight, um, clean render simply from uh, the noisy image. And it's using AI to do that, which is very powerful. Uh, as far as our other settings, light map resolution 32. Basically, every surface on here is going to get approximately 32 texels, which is uh, a texel is a 3D pixel. 32 is a little bit lower than the standard 40, but we're doing that to optimize space a little bit. Uh, for indoor scenes or scenes you want really high resolution for things, you could crank that to 64 or so, but that's going to significantly increase the size of your light maps or the number of light maps you're using. So we'll set that to 32. Light padding 2. This is the space between surfaces. If you uh, are really worried about um, how pixels are, if you have a lot of like pixel overlap, which when you bake your lighting, you'll get warnings on that. Sometimes raising your uh, padding to four, or in some cases, even six, um, that'll, that might help your light baking quality, or you'll, you'll uh, get fewer shadow errors, which uh, we'll talk about once we have a light bake to, uh, to kind of illustrate. Then of course we have our light mapping size, and this is essentially the maximum size of your atlas. So the larger your atlas size, the more uh, objects you can pack into it, because you're essentially creating um, a huge image for your whole, uh, for all your objects to bake into. So like every single one of these walls will be part of that texture atlas, but of course you only have so many pixels within an image you can bake to. So Unity will create multiple images um, for you to bake into. But uh, again, like the larger the image, the more memory it takes up. 
So basically, uh, your light mapping size, 1024, is a great starting off point, especially if you're only using uh, 32 per face. Uh, in some cases where I have like a ton of objects, I can actually bump that up to 2048, and that'll be a lower number. But uh, you want to be careful raising this amount, because going from 1024 to 2048 can have a much higher uh, memory footprint. Footprint, And in some cases, you'll, you may even drop your memory size to like uh, 512 or something like that. It's, it's kind of a trade-off between the number of references, or like the number of maps you have, versus how much memory each of those individual maps take up. So usually 1024 is where I leave that. Uh, I do want to compress my light maps, because that gives, makes them uh, have a much lower memory footprint. And for this scene, I'm going to leave ambient inclusion turned off. Uh, in some scenes, you want to have that turned on. And essentially, that's like the contact shadows between surface, surfaces. It's technically not physically accurate, but it can add a lot of visual fidelity to your scene if you have a relatively simple looking one. But uh, we'll leave that off for now. We're going to use non-directional light maps because um, directional and non-directional light maps, the only difference between them is um, uh, directional light maps actually bake secondary maps for surfaces that have normal maps on them, which is a different concept. But essentially, um, since our scene has no normal maps in it, we're not really taking advantage of the directional mode. So we're going to leave that turned off for the majority of our scenes. Then we just have some indirect intensity, which these are global values we can use to tweak our lighting after the fact in case we want to make things a little bit brighter. And then our light map parameter, which is medium, high resolution, low resolution, and very low. And we'll usually leave this at medium, but essentially if we click this, we can go into the very like nitty gritty details of how our baked global illumination is working, what sort of settings, like quality, anti-aliasing samples, um, and they're very complicated, so we recommend just switching between presets for the most part until you're uh, more familiar with all the ins and outs of the renderer. But medium or high resolution usually achieves the lighting quality that we want. So we'll leave that there. Now that we've got our general uh, light bake setting set up, the other thing we need to look at is the actual lighting objects in our scene. Which I'm going to enable my gizmos here, and we'll have a look. So essentially, other than having our scenes or scene objects set to static, we actually need lights that will cast bake lighting, because by default, most lights will actually be set to the real-time preset, which is like for dynamic lights or lights that we want to manipulate during runtime, but don't actually bake lighting to our shadow maps. So I'll set that to bake there, and like any other light, we can manipulate different settings on it, including the intensity, indirect multiplier, which is our bounce lighting, and our soft shadow settings, which is basically, um, as the name implies, there's a certain angle you can set for, dif uh, for different light types that will change uh, how softly they gradiate when they strike surfaces, um, which is sort of complicated, but for the most part we'll leave it at a relatively low angle. Generally I don't recommend going above 10, but if you want like really soft lighting maybe you'll go up to 30. But um, we, uh, for, specifically for this light, we want a relatively hard angle, so I'm just going to set that to 1. And other than that, sometimes I'll set lights to uh, render mode important for if they're particularly uh, important for our light bakes. And uh, culling mask, that basically is how we can determine whether a light casts on a specific object or not. We can sort of control uh, lighting on a purge object basis by using culling masks, but for the most part, uh, particularly for our baked lights, we'll leave culling masks set to everything. Okay, so other than uh, those settings, we'll also want to look at the different lighting types, because of course there's other light types um, besides our directional light. Uh, the other options for lights include spotlights, which as the name implies, it's a light that um, sort of it goes out as a spotlight. You have various settings there. You can control how far it's casting, its color, intensity, the general range, uh, the angle at which the light sort of spreads out. And of course, you have the, on the other side, you have point lights, which is to say, like, uh, it's a single point casting in all direction. Works really well, well for light bulbs. And finally, we have the specific to baked lighting uh, light, which is an area light which, as the name implies, it's kind of, I have this one sort of set up as a strip, but essentially, if I set it back to default, as you can see, it's sort of an area, and this whole area will cast uh, lighting from it that can only be baked in my light maps.
Okay, so we'll delete that light there. And the only other thing that gets baked into light maps will be emissive materials that are flagged as, as uh, baked. So uh, as the name implies, if your object has an emissive channel in it, you can actually tweak your color settings so that the object casts uh, actual light in your scene by changing the intensity value. So for instance, I'll set my color to about here, set my intensity, and then the only other thing I need to flag is to make sure my global illumination is set to baked. Otherwise, uh, it, if it's set to real time, it won't bake to my environment. And then make sure the object is also static. And that's essentially it. Uh, once you have your light settings in place, your objects are flagged as static, and uh, your lights are set to the correct mode, i.e. baked, or in some cases mixed, uh, all we have to do is go back to our lighting tab, and assuming we have all the settings we want to bake with, we can hit Generate Lighting. Uh, and because of the settings that I have in place now, this process should take a, just a couple seconds. So you can see the clock there, it's climbing, it's baking. And um, yeah, we're really taking advantage of the denoising features Unity's using to quickly figure out uh, how our lighting looks. And I'm expecting like a couple small light bake errors here and there. So as you can see, general lighting we have a little bit of smudging over here but otherwise considering how low the samples are we can see all the lighting in our scene and it looks pretty darn good we've got a little bit of noise here because this is an emissive material I will say I would recommend avoiding emissive materials where possible as they tend to be very noisy they cast a lot of samples um, but yeah I mean that object is lighting the walls behind it over here, we've got all of our lights as well. Our point light, spotlight is casting down here, and our area light's got this cool little glowy strip. Good way to uh, to light your scene with that. And our spotlight is lighting all the lighting in our scene. Okay, and that's essentially it. So usually at this point, once I have my lighting laid out, and it's looking good. Maybe tweak the angle on that a little bit. Maybe I want to raise the intensity of this light, like so. Something really ridiculous, like five. Save my scene. Generate lighting again. Okay. Okay, so once this is finished baking, I'll touch a little bit on light map UVs and where to actually like review your light maps. Because of course, like there's other tools to uh, to look at the quality of your light maps. Okay, there we go. So I've changed the angle, as you can see, the lighting is updated, and essentially that's the process of light baking. You're tweaking values, and then you're hitting bake at lower settings, and as uh, once I've figured out, like, oh, this is the lighting that I want my whole scene to go, maybe I'll raise my sample counts, or another good way to increase the quality of your lighting is to actually use a CPU bake, as GPU, although very powerful and fast, uh, tends to introduce some issues, like uh, these splotches on the bottom of the wall I've tested with, these are actually not present in a CPU bake. But um, yeah, for like our iterative testing and just figuring out the general look of the lighting that we want, GPU and low sample counts with denoising works very well. So to actually um, look at the baked light maps that we have, if I t click this baked light maps tab, I can actually see the complete atlas for all the surfaces. And as you can see, these are all cubes, and Unity's taken all the different uh, UV faces for each one of these cubes and laid them out over these different images. So here's another one, here's another one over here. I can also look at the UVs on an individual asset by clicking on it after a bake. And if I open up the baked light map parameter, there's an open preview option that I can actually see the highlighted UVs. So this specific wall, for instance, are these UVs on this map. So if there's overlapping faces or a light bake error, I can actually see that in the preview. Uh, and I'm using the default cube here, but basically if I wanted to, say, uh, generate new light map UVs on the object, uh, I have this flip cube here for testing. And if I plug that in there, so this wall is different now. But what I can do is on this cube, I can generate light map UVs, hit apply, and what Unity's done is it's taken the geometry and tried to do a relatively good job in creating light map UVs for that object. Uh, another option you can do to create light map UVs, which 
can I actually pre preview the new UVs on this object? Yeah, see, like, it's laid out the UVs a little bit different on this mesh. So um, basically, when I bake this object, it'll use those UV, uh, those new UVs to bake to the texture. So if I bake again one more time, just relatively short bake, like last time. Mm -hmm. So it's using the new UVs, which are fixed, supposedly. Takes a moment to compile everything. Oh, just flew away a little bit. And yeah, there we go. There's my new wall. Okay, and that essentially concludes baking lighting in Unity. And again, like we're generalizing a lot on this topic. We recommend reading up on it a little bit more, but it's still a very fascinating um, way to improve the performance in your scene and also increase the lighting fidelity.